Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Damn Fancy Creations and today I'm going to show you guys how to make an ice cream scoop topper for your tumblers that is also removable for easy cleaning. If you like this video, be sure to hit subscribe. Alright, so this is the tumbler that we are going to be making today. It is an ice cream scoop topper that will be detachable from the lid, which will allow for proper cleaning of the lid and the topper itself. So I think these are super cute and just add a fun little element to your tumblers, especially the drip ones. So for materials, we are going to need some cardboard, I just cut the flaps off of some of my boxes. Aluminum foil. And some supplies such as um, an ice cream scooper. And some mixing sticks. And you're going to want a few mixing bowls as well. And to color it... We are going to be using dispersion colors and extreme colors from CC DIY and some of their new holiday sprinkles, which are super fun. And this is the spackling I use. It is Red Devil brand lightweight spackling. Um, I get this on Amazon. It's super light, which um, makes the toppers not very heavy. And you're going to need some flour. So for starters, we are going to wrap our cardboard in aluminum foil. And this is going to be basically the base um, on which we make our scoops on. When it's dry, the spackling does not stick to the aluminum foil, so it makes it really easy to remove. So you're basically just going to wrap them kind of like flat presents. <laughs> and then we will wrap the other one and we will be ready to go. So just kind of fold it over. So once they are ready to go, we are going to take the top of the cup we're going to work with. This one is a 15 ounce wine glass, I believe, from Hog. And you are going to trace the top side onto the foil. Most of the lids are going to be around the same size. Some of them might be a little bit bigger. But I just like to trace a rough outline so we know how big we need to make the scoops. <clears throat> so once you have those traced, we will be ready to mix up our speckling. So we're going to set these aside. And then we are going to scoop some speckling into a large measuring cup. I like to use a larger um, container such as this big measuring cup if I'm making up several scoops because it's easier to mix up and it's easier to scoop out. So this is the texture of spackling. It kind of reminds me of Cool Whip or Crisco. <clears throat> if any of you guys still use Crisco. So you can scoop them out like this if you want to, but I prefer to add a little bit of flour to the mixture because it gives it a more realistic ice cream texture. 
so y'all can see it has like a fluffy texture right now and then you'll see it start to change when we add flour to it so you're going to I usually just start with you know one tablespoon or so maybe a little bit more and then add to it once I mix it all up kind of like baking you don't want to add all of your dry ingredients into the wet at first you want to make sure that they all get combined evenly And you can tell a little bit in the video how the texture is starting to change to more of a doughy cookie dough type of texture versus um, Cool Whip texture. So once you have it to the texture that you want, we're going to get our scoop. I like the one with the little trigger that um, helps force the scoops out. And you're just going to get a heaping scoop. I don't flatten it out or anything, just a big, big old scoop. <laughs> and you're going to place this on the edge of one of your circles. And pull the trigger. And there you go. One scoop down. It looks like real ice cream. So then you're going to get another, not quite as heaping, but still a decent sized scoop and place it a little bit overlapping the first one and on the opposite side, just kind of press down and then pull the trigger. So scoop number two is done. And then we are going to do our last scoop. And I kind of place this in between the two scoops and a little in front. And there you go. So I kind of press down any little weird parts that may be sticking up. And if you see some parts that are just kind of barely hanging on, I just kind of knock them back into the mixture because they won't, you know, you want to make sure that it's still going to be pretty secure when you attach it. You don't want little pieces breaking off. So one is down. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Scoop number one, scoop number two, and I sometimes I'll, if I don't like how one looked, I'll just scoop it out and then re-scoop it. <laughs> and sometimes when you get to the very bottom, there might not be as much flour mixed in, so I'll go back and add some more in. So those are my three scoops. So for this next one, I'm going to show you guys how I color them, but the first two scoops I am not going to color because those are going to be white. Um, this next cup is going to be red, green, and white. So right now, I just kind of did this off camera. I just mixed up some regular white and some flour um, just so I can get my first two scoops down. So this is the exact two scoops. Them the exact steps that we just did with the first completed scoops. And then we are going to mix up our colored scoops. So I'm using um, Emerald Extreme Color, Freedom Red, and Ruby Red Dispersion Colors. So when you mix the colors in, this is just spackling and color. No flour is added yet because it's much easier to mix up the color when it's still pretty soft. And I am just adding a couple drops at a time because this color is very, very concentrated. And I find that 
these colors work the best out of anything I've found because it really doesn't take a whole lot. Um, I've tried acrylic paint and it seems to make it a little like foamy and a little too fluffy. So even if I add flour into it, it still doesn't quite have the texture that I want. So once you have your color the way you want it, then I start adding the flour. And again, you can see how the texture changes to more of a doughy consistency. And now we're going to do the red. So again, this is just spackling and the colors. So I'm just kind of pressing the color into the spackling, mixing it really, really well. And I added a little bit of the Freedom Red just to brighten it up just a little bit. And I poured way too much of this red in here. But it's alright because I ended up liking the color. <laughs> and again, once you have the color the way you want it, then we are going to add some flour. And when I did the drips for this cup, I did the same dispersion colors for the epoxy drips so it matches the scoops. So with this flower, you're really just kind of pressing it into the spackling. I really kind of want to get in there with my hands, but it will, one, probably stain my fingers, and two, definitely get under my nails. <laughs> So the texture is the main thing that you want to focus on. Like you can definitely see how it looks a little bit more like crumbly versus smooth. So once you have your texture the way that you want it, we are going to bring back the single white scoops that we did and add the red and green. So we're doing the same thing, just pressing one down next to the white one Just like that and you will see when I tried to add my green scoop I realized that it was a little too soft for me and I decided to add some more flour to it see it just didn't sit as well as I wanted it to so I added probably like you know a half of a tablespoon more flour mixed it up really good and then tried again So now you see it works much better. It releases from the scoop easier. And there we go. So now what I do, while the scoops are still pretty soft, I will add some sprinkles. We are going to be using the gingerbread mix and the peppermint mix from CCDIY. And I really just kind of wanted the gingerbreads. <laughs> so I'm picking all the other ones out. And you have a bit of work time with the spackling. It's not like it's something that dries super quick. So I'll just put the sprinkles on and press them in with a um, toothpick if I need to. 
And when this dries, I will also go back and add a couple more with glue or an adhesive just to add some more on there. And when all of this is finished, I will either spray seal it with clear acrylic spray or epoxy it with a tiny paintbrush. You have to seal the spackle because if you don't and it comes in contact with water, it will start to dissolve and disintegrate and you definitely do not want that to happen um, especially if you sell these to customers you want to be sure that they are super durable so make sure to get in all the cracks and crevices either with the clear spray or the epoxy clear spray definitely doesn't take as long to dry but i feel that the epoxy may be a little bit more durable um, i made two for myself both ways and I am going to see if they hold up the same, and this is what they look like. So once your topper is either sealed really, really good with clear spray or epoxied and cured, then we are going to add the straw hole. I do not add it before um, while the spackling is still wet because it could shrink up a little bit and your straw might not fit through or something could bump it and, you know, we just want to make sure that it stays perfect. So you're going to need a drill and drill bits. So what I like to do is put my top on and kind of turn the ice cream scoops to kind of how I want it to sit on the cup. So I know where I want to put the straw. So I will hold the ice cream scoop onto the lid and when I get it where I want it I will mark on the bottom of the topper where the straw is going to go. So I just have this little tool that I use. Um, I've also done it with a sharpie, marker, pen, whatever will fit. And once you have it marked, we are going to drill our hole. And I use the biggest bit that I have, which is 3 8 This will fit um, all the straws that I have. Um, I don't think that it will fit like smoothie straws, but nobody's really going to use those anyway. And when you drill your hole, you want to be sure that you are drilling straight through. Meaning 100% straight. You don't want to angle it up or down because then the straw will not go into the scoop and lid into the cup properly. It will be hard to get in and it just won't, it won't fit properly. Trust me, I tried it. <laughs> so I'm drilling off camera because it's super awkward to try to drill and uh, <laughs> hold it over my desk, but I will show you guys what it looks like once I get it through. So you guys can see that it is really straight. I don't angle it or try not to angle it at all. And you may have some little pieces of epoxy that get kind of funny 
So I just take my scissors and kind of cut around. Um, and you will need to either epoxy with a little paintbrush or some kind of other sealer where that hole is because you don't want moisture from your straw getting inside there. Um, it's really easy just to do it with a paintbrush. It's not going to drip out. I usually do it twice just when I'm working on cups and have leftover epoxy. So when you put your straw through, and you guys can see that it fits really nicely on there. So it looks really good. So the next step is going to be magnets, which is how we make them detachable. Um, I did want to add that if you guys use epoxy for the toppers, do not use fast set. I love fast set, um, but it really does have an odor with it, so you just don't want to use that on your cup and then your customer complain. Um, it just isn't a good idea to use it. So for the magnets, it's going to be different for every topper or lid that you use. So it's always best to kind of test it. I like to put the magnet on the cup and then put the topper on and hold it to see if the magnet will connect with the topper once it's on the lid, if that makes sense because you can hold it and if the magnets don't move, then that means that there's a good connection. So the magnet stays still on the very back. So that is where I'm going to attach it. So I'm just going to glue it with um, liquid fusion. It is my go-to glue for everything I use. Just put a little dot there And I kind of let the glue set up just a little bit so it gets a little um, sticky and not as runny. So I'm just kind of cleaning stuff up while this glue is setting up for a minute. So when we put our magnet there, we just wait until it's dry and then we um, connect the top to it and it fits together really nicely. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and it helped you out and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.